The true forms and names of the Gorosei are finally revealed and this provides us with a lot of information about their future matchups and powers. Saturn is a Gyuki, also known as an Ushioni, which is already a well-known fact, probably everyone theorized that. Saint Marcus is an Itsumane, a massive, eerie bird which in Japanese means until when. According to Taiheiki, around the fall of 1334, an epidemic illness caused many deaths and almost every night an eerie bird appeared appeared on top of the Shishinden, crying, until when, until when, causing great fear. Itsumane was later defeated by the master of arrows, Minamoto no Yorimasa, who shot down the eerie bird with a kaburaya. In chapter 1110, Mars flew high in the air to attack the frontier dome barrier that protects Egghead's labophase. Saint Shepherd Jupiter, the warrior god of agriculture, can transform himself into a sandworm, an enormous worm-like monster with a large mouth. It must be noted that, unlike the fiendish creatures related to the other elders, the sandworm is not a yokai of Japanese culture. In fact, it's the only beast among the five whose name is not written in kanji but in katakana. Currently, it is trending that Jupiter could be the traitor of the Gorosei. If it's true, this could be a new hint for this theory. Most probably, the sandworm is based on the homonymous fictional creature featured in Frank Herbert's Dune novels. As Luffy was busy fighting Saturn, Jupiter plunged into the ground and re appeared underneath Luffy, swallowing him. Luckily, Luffy was saved by Dorian Bragi, who sliced Jupiter's head off with a powerful combined attack. Theoretically, this should imply that Jupiter died, but this seems hardly possible. Most likely, all five elders have amazing regeneration powers like Saturn. The warrior god of justice, top man Warkiri, is a Houki, a giant boar with four tusks. Nojuro can transform into the Bakotsu, which, according to Japanese legends, is a skeletal horse that seeks revenge revenge after being burned to death. Upon entering what seemed to be a hybrid form, combining his human upper body with the lower half of a horse, Nujiro demonstrated his skills. Moving at high speed on his horse-like legs, he attacked every Mark III pacifista in the surroundings. Within a few seconds, he defeated several of the cyborgs, cutting them down with his sword. Nujiro's slashes left their targets frozen, much like Brook's techniques with the Revive Revive fruit. What's even more interesting is that the blade of Nujiro sword was shown to be black. Now, it remains unconfirmed whether Nujuro used armament hockey on his weapon or if he was wielding a full-fledged black blade. We must expect the Gorosei to be very powerful, so if he is the user of a black blade, it wouldn't be surprising at all. Among all One Piece characters, only the strongest swordsman, Dracul Mihawk, and the legendary samurai Shimotsuki Ryuma were able to evolve their weapons into permanent black blades. In this chapter, we also saw that, finally, Zoro managed to defeat defeat Luchi after six months. I can't even say that Zoro was playing because Luchi is an underrated and very strong character, but it seems that Zoro defeated him easily after hearing Sanji's disappointed response. As I mentioned in my previous video, I am sure that chapter 1111 will be about Zoro and I expected him to defeat Luchi in this chapter and fight Nujiru in the next one. Now he has defeated Luchi and the second strongest straw hat does not have an opponent for now. Meanwhile, Nujiru is moving around Egghead freely. I am sure the next chapter will end with their clash because 1111 is Zoro's number and it's time for him to have another badass moment. We all know that Oda loves to play with words, numbers, and chapter titles. In past years, we've seen that he especially loves to play with bounties. The specific reason for Oda choosing 1.111 billion berries as Zoro's bounty has to do with Zoro's birthday, which is November 11th or simply 1111. This is also why Sanji's bounty is 1.032 billion berries, as his birthday is on March 2nd, or 032 on the Japanese calendar. In chapter 11, Zoro had his first badass moment in One Piece against the Buggy Pirates, and he also saved Luffy for the first time. In chapter 111, during the Whiskey Peak arc, after defeating 100 men single-handedly, Zoro saved Vivi, had another badass moment, and fought Mr. Five. Also, there are many other reasons why Zoro will have a clash with Nojuro and defeat him either now or later in the story. In his Hindu mythology, there are nine planets or grahas that are believed to influence human life. These grahas are the Sun, the Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, North Node, and South Node. The Sun is Luffy, the planets are the Gorosei, and the Moon is Emu. Grahas have their own names and their own crystals. For example, Saturn, aka Shani, his crystal is Sapphire in Hindu mythology. In One Piece, we saw that Sapphire Scales is a rare and fatal disease which causes Sapphire-like stones 
stones to grow on the victim's skin. Ginny contracted the disease during her time as a slave in Marijua due to a failed chemical experiment performed by J. Garcia Saturn. We have already seen another crystal and another disease in Law's flashback, Amber Lead. Amber lead was a white ore that was found only in the country of Flevence. Amber and topaz are associated with Braspati, aka Jupiter. We may see Jupiter and Law's fight in the end, and Law is one of the most important and strongest characters in One Piece, and his main enemies are already defeated, Don Flamingo and Kaido. One of the Gorosei being Water D. Law's final opponent makes a lot of sense. Now let's talk about Nujuru and his final opponent, Zoro. Everything hints at their matchup, and there are three reasons why why they must fight. Let's start with stones. Venus, aka Shukra's crystal, is diamond. I'm sure you all remember Mr. One's words to Zoro. Are you going to cut through a diamond next? Because of this line, a lot of people have theorized that Shiryu would eat Jozu's devil fruit and fight Zoro in the end, but Shiryu ate the Absalom Suke Suke no Mi. There is no reason for Zoro to fight Jozu, so the only character connected to diamonds that would be Zoro's future opponent is Nujuro. Another small hint is that Shukra's stone color is white and Zoro has often been associated with the color white and especially the white tiger. There are even figures of Zoro with a white tiger. Another parallel is that Venus might be the king of hell. Nujuro's name means Venus, but the V is separated and I'm sure it has some meaning. V from v -ness is for Vendetta and Vendetta is associated with vengeance. Vengeance can transform into a ghost rider, like being a skeleton on a horse with flames. Venus is a skeleton centaur with flames. Vengeance seeks vengeance on those who commit evil deeds. Another ghost rider, the headless horseman, was the spirit of vengeance. Ghost rider is the king of hell and Zoro wants to become the king of hell. I believe this is another hint why the Zoro vs Nojuro fight will happen for sure. There are theories gaining traction that Vegapunk's message is not being broadcast from Egghead and is coming from another place. The most relevant one is O'Hara for many reasons, but this is a topic for another video and if it's true, we have these seven minutes just to see the power levels and abilities of the Gorosei and compare them to the Straw Hat's current strength. I believe Zoro and Najuro will clash and test each other's abilities. In chapter 909, we also saw that Zoro named himself Zoro Juro in Wano. As you can see, Zoro Juro is very similar to Najuro. We can count that as another hint. I don't think either of them will lose the fight at Egghead. Most likely Zoro will defeat Najuro at the end of One Piece. Usually Zoro always has some badass moments in every arc, but this is an exception, surprisingly. That's why I believe Oda has been saving Zoro for something great. He finally defeated Rob Lucci and the Gorosei have just arrived. These two events align perfectly for Zoro to have a great moment in this fight. At the end of the video, I want to mention that I had some doubts about their character design after seeing their silhouettes in chapter 1085, as I didn't want them to look goofy, but after reading this chapter, I'm satisfied with the Gorosei's true forms. Now we must wait till we see Emu's real form. Until then, if you want to know more about Emu, you can watch this video right here. Thanks for watching.